Okay, in this video, I'm going to share with you the results from the 1970s National League Stratomatic Tournament that I played. Just to be clear, this is not a complete Diamond Gems tournament like my 1970s American League video was. Um, I stated in a previous video that uh, I don't have the 1975 Reds from that Diamond Gem set, but what I did very simply was I just replaced them with the uh, 1976 Reds from the... Um, season set from that year uh we have a eight team field over here so let me go through the rankings with you real quick um starting at the very top obviously the number one seed are the 1976 cincinnati reds coming in at number two are the 1979 pittsburgh pirates so being that this is an 18 field uh what we have is these two teams being the top two seeds is they will wait around and see who they play in the semifinals of the tournament at the number three seed we have the 1971 pittsburgh pirates and number four we have the 1974 la Dodgers. So those two teams, what they're doing, sitting at the three and four seeds, they are waiting to see who wins the two play-in games. Now, what we have coming in at number eight are the 1979 Montreal Expos, and they will be playing the number five seed, the 1977 LA Dodgers. That game will obviously be played in LA. That is a one-game playoff. And in the other play-in game, we have the number seven seed, the 1976 Philadelphia Phillies, and they will be playing at the 1972 Cincinnati Reds. The 72 Reds are the number six seed. So let's get into the results of this tournament. And uh, again, I'll be going uh, game by game through this tournament, but not going into great detail about the game. So feel free to uh, pause the video. Um, as you wish to take a closer look at the play-by-play. -play. Um, in the first play-in game, we have the 79 Expos at the 77 Dodgers. And you're going to see the 1979 Expos win that one by a score of 3-1 to one as Steve Rogers goes all the way, only allowing four base runners and striking out five. So the number five seed, the 1977 LA Dodgers are out. And the 1979 Montreal Expos are moving on to take on the number three seed, the 1971 Pittsburgh Pirates in a best of three. Now, in the second playing game, again, we have the 76 Phillies at the 1972 Cincinnati Reds. We got Steve Carlton going up against Jack Billingham. And you can see the 72 Reds take this one by a score of 6-2. to two. It was a 3-1 game in the bottom half of the eighth inning, and Tony Perez was able to break it open with a three-run home run to make the score 6-1. to one. Uh, That three-run Jack was hit off of uh, reliever Twitchell. Um, so the 1972 Reds are moving on to the best of three, where they will take on the number four seed, the 1974 Los Angeles Dodgers. And of course, the 1976 Phillies are out of the tournament. So in the first best of three series, let me first go over the 72 Reds taking on the 1974 Los Angeles Dodgers. And once again, just a reminder, um, this is a best of three. And it picks up the day after the play-in game. So the 72 Reds do not get like a day off going into this best of three. So in the first game of the best of three, we have Grimsley going for the 72 Reds and Don Sutton going for the 74 Dodgers. And you're going to see the 74 Dodgers really lose a heartbreaker here as they lose it 8-7 to seven, as the 72 Reds were able to rally against reliever Mike Marshall as they get the four runs in the top half of the eighth inning, uh, the big hit in that inning was a Tony Perez two RBI double. And the 1972 Reds are able to hang on from there for an 8-7 win. So a very big win for the 72 Reds. The first game of the best of three, they win it by a score of 8-7. to seven. Now we move on to game number two a game that the 74 Dodgers absolutely have to have. They have Messersmith on the mound, and the 72 Reds have Gary Nolan on the mound, and you're going to see the 74 Dodgers are able to win this one by a score of 5-4. to four. Uh, The big hit in this game was Billy Buckner hitting a three-run home run in the bottom half of the fifth inning to give the Dodgers the 5-4 lead, and they will 
hold it from there. Mike Marshall was able to get the save in this one as he goes two scoreless innings. So we move on to a deciding game number three in this first round series where we have Tommy John going for the 74 Dodgers and Don Gullett for the 72 Reds. And you're going to see Tommy John goes all the way only allowing two hits and two walks, and the 1974 Dodgers are able to eliminate the 72 Reds by a score of 4-1. to one. Uh, Ron Say comes through with a big two-run home run in the bottom half of the fourth inning to give the Dodgers that 4-1 to one lead. Uh, you had a big error by right fielder George Foster uh, with two outs in that inning to keep the inning going. So the 1972 Reds are out of the tournament, and the 1974 LA Dodgers are moving on to the semifinals where they will take on the number one seed, the 1976 Cincinnati Reds. Now, in the other first-round series, we have the 1979 Montreal Expos taking on the 1971 Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, You're going to see the Pittsburgh Pirates win game number one by a score of three to two behind Steve Blass as he goes seven innings, only allowing two runs. Let me move on to game number two here. Now, this was a brutal loss for the 1979 Montreal Expos. Uh, You heard me speak in previous videos about how much I like the 79 Expos bullpen. And basically, whenever I play with them and it's not a game started by Steve Rogers, basically my strategy is try to have a lead by the fifth or sixth inning and just hand it off to the bullpen. But you could see the 1971 Pirates were able to get five runs across the board in the bottom half of the eighth inning to take a six to two lead. Um, One of the really big plays in the game, if you look at that bottom half of the eighth inning where the Pirates scored the five runs, you had Al Oliver reach on a E7. That's Warren Cromarty out there in left field for the 79 Expos. So the Expos defense let them down a little bit. Um, You then had a two ribby single by Manny Sanguian, and you had another ribby single by pinch hitter Gene Klein. So the 71 Pirates were able to break it open a little bit, take a 6-2 lead to the top half of the ninth inning. The 79 Expos were able to make it kind of interesting in that top half of the ninth inning. They were able to get a run aboard, and they were able to get the tying run to the plate, but no dice. So the 1979 Expos are out which means the 1971 Pirates are moving on to the semifinals where they will take on the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. And that's where we'll get started. 71 Pirates at 79 Pirates. Game number one, we've got Bob Johnson on the mound for the 71 Pirates and Burt Blylevin for the 1979 version of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And you're going to see the 1979 Pirates are able to win a really wild game by a score of 5-4 to four in 12 innings. Just a brutal loss for the 1971 Pittsburgh Pirates. Um, it was Bryles Nelson getting the loss in relief. As you could tell, the bullpen was pretty all used up. Uh, there were a lot of pinch hitting in this game. Uh, so I was pretty much at the very bottom end of the bullpen there. The 71 Pirates had a 4-2 to two lead going to the bottom half of the 12th inning, and you could see it was a RBI double by Phil Gardner to tie the game at 4, and then Omar Marino had the walk-off single to win it 5-4. to four. So the 1979 Pirates are up a game in this best of five. Now, in game number two, I decided to bring Steve Blass back on three days rest for the 71 Pirates, and John Candelaria will be pitching for the 79 Pirates, and you're going to see the 71 Pirates win this one by a score of 3-1. to one. Outstanding performance by Blass as he goes eight innings, not allowing any earned runs and only three hits. So we have this series tied a game apiece as we move on to game number three. And in game number three, we have Bruce Keyson going for the 79 Pirates and Doc Ellis for the 1971 Pirates, and you're going to see the 71 Pirates win this one by a score of 5-3. to three. Uh, The big blow in this game was a Roberto Clemente Grand Slam in the bottom half of the second inning to make the score 5-1. Um, to one. Uh, Credit to the 79 Pirates bullpen. They were able to keep the 79 
team in it as they were able to make it interesting. They cut the lead to 5-3, uh, but just weren't able to um, tack any more runs on the board. So there you have it. The 1971 Pirates are up two games to one as we move on to game number four. So the 1979 Pirates backs are to the wall right now. And what I decided to do for them is bring back Burt Blylevin on three days rest. And he's going up against Bob Johnson for the 71 Pirates, who is also pitching on three days rest. The 1971 Pirates had a 4-2 to two lead going to the top half of the ninth inning on this game. And you're going to see the 1979 Pirates were able to pull through with uh, three big runs to uh, save their backs and move this series on to a game number five. You can see it was Bill Robinson getting a two RBI triple to tie the game. And then with one out, it was Tim Foley driving him home with a ribby single to make the score five to four. And Kent Tacovi was able to get the save. So the 1979 Pirates are able to stave off elimination as they win this one by a score of five to four. So as we move on to game number five now, we have a rematch of the game two starters, both starters going on three days rest. Obviously, Steve Blass for the 71 Pirates and John Candelaria for the 1979 Pirates. Um, And you're going to see it's the 1979 Pirates moving on as they win this one by a score of six to three. Uh, Really just a just a terrific game and a terrific way to finish up what was really just an awesome series. It, It was a lot of fun playing this series all the games were close it seemed like almost every game came down to the last at bat um willie stargell tied the game in the top half of the ninth inning with a solo home run off of kent to Colby to make it 3-3 um and then in the bottom half of the ninth inning i actually had something come up here um not as far as like a stratomatic rule but as far as like an official scoring rule as to how you would do it in Stratomatic. But let me take you through the bottom half of the ninth inning here. Uh, Bill Madlock led off by making out. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was actually John Milner making out to lead off the inning. And then Bill Madlock reaches on a Willie Stargell error in left field. And then catcher Melot makes out. And then with two outs, I pinch hit Mike Eastler and he walks. So with two on and two out, I bring up Bill Robinson. I roll a um, home run on his card with a triple the rest of the way. So obviously the, the game's over no matter what. But what I did was I just gave him the home run because it's either home run or triple. So I wasn't sure if I should just put that down as a single or, you know, what, <laughs> what would it be done? Uh, But anyway, either way, uh, the 79 Pirates would have won the game anyway. Even if I just put it down as a single, the game would have ended 4-3. But I just thought that was kind of a funny way just to um, end the game. And there you have it. The 1979 Pirates are moving on to the National League Championship round where they will await the winner of the 74 Dodgers taking on the 1976 Cincinnati Reds. So in game number one of the 74 Dodgers at 76 Reds. Um, I decided to bring Don Sutton back on three days rest to start this series for the 74 Dodgers. He's going up against Don Gullett for the 1976 Cincinnati Reds. And you could see the 76 Reds take game number one by a score of uh, four to three. The 1976 Reds had a three two, or excuse me, they had a four two lead after five innings and you've heard me speak on before about how much I like the combination of Sarmiento and Eastwick out of this bullpen for the 1976 Reds. Now the 74 Dodgers did get a run off of Eastwick in the top half of the ninth inning to make it four to three. Um, But again, this is another one of those examples where I basically didn't think twice about when I'm sitting there in the bottom half of the fifth inning in a 2-2 game and the pitcher leading off Don Gullett. What I decided to do was pinch hit Dan Dreesen to try to get a rally going. And sure enough, what happens, he leads off with a walk. And then we get singles by Rose, Morgan, and Griffey. So I'm sitting there thinking in the fifth inning, even if I don't get a run in the fifth inning, I go to the top of the sixth inning 
with a 2-2 tie with Sarmiento and Eastwick waiting in the wings in the bullpen. So um, that is really a unsung weapon on this 1976 Cincinnati Reds team. So 76 Reds take game number one by a score of four to three. Moving on to game number two, we got Pat Zachary on the mound for the Reds and Andy Messersmith for the 74 Dodgers. And you can see the 76 Reds win this one fairly easily by a score of seven to two. Um, It was a fairly close game going into the bottom half of the eighth inning, but it was a three-run home run by Johnny Bench to break the game open to make the score 7-2. to two. Um, You could see, once again, just a terrific performance out of the 76 Reds bullpen as you get four innings out of Bourbon, Sarmiento, and Eastwick, uh, the three of them only allowing one run. So the 1976 Reds are really sitting in the driver's seat in this best-of-five series as they lead it two games to none. So the series moves to L.A. for game three, and if necessary, game four. Gary Nolan for the 76 Reds, Tom Tommy John for the 74 Dodgers. And you're going to see the 74 Dodgers win this one, a game that they obviously had to have by a score of two to nothing. Tommy John goes all the way, only allowing six hits. And what was really, um, uh, it, it's, it's games like this where I just love playing when I'm doing like a solo playthrough because it's one of those really clean games where there really weren't any real, you know, moves to be made or anything like that. It was just one, two, three, up and down the board. Gary Nolan pitched a terrific game, uh, just gave up a home run to Crawford and an RBI single to Bill Russell. Those were the only runs scored in the game. So the 1974 Dodgers stay alive. And we move on to game number four, where again, we have Don Sutton pitching on three days rest, and he's going up against Fred Norman for the 1976 Cincinnati Reds. And you're going to see in what was really a pretty wild game, the 1976 Reds are moving on to my National League final as they win this one in 12 innings by a score of six to three. Um, let me show you something here in this top half of the 12th inning. Now, um, I had already used up Mike Marshall for five innings. Um, if you look at the Dodgers pitching line on the right here, you'll see Sutton went five innings. Um, and with the 74 Dodgers having a two to one lead going into the top half of the sixth inning. I just said to myself, okay, well the 74 Dodgers have to have this game. Mike Marshall is a four inning reliever. I'm just going to ride him the rest of the game. Well, he ended up giving up a run in the seventh and a run in the eighth. I pushed him for five innings, but had to pinch hit for him. So um, I decided to go with Jeff John out of the bullpen. Um, I actually think he has a second best card in that bullpen for the 74 Dodgers. And what happened in that top half of the 12th inning, uh, if we just go player by player, uh, you're going to see Joel Youngblood pinch hits for Manny Sarmiano, and he, he leads off by making out. Then we have Rose single, Joe Morgan walk, and with Ken Griffey up, He hits a ground ball to second base, Um, but because Lopes was a three, not able to turn the double play. And then sure enough, what happens right after that, Johnny Bench comes up and hits a three run home run. So even though it shows on paper, the 1974 Dodgers did not make any errors in game number four. You could definitely say that their defense let them down in this game. And Raleigh Eastwick comes into the game and retires the 1974 Dodgers. Auerbach has a um, pinch hit single with two outs to extend the inning, but the 74 Dodgers were not able to mount much of a rally. So I give the 74 Dodgers credit. They mounted a pretty good fight against the 1976 Cincinnati Reds. Again, just to go back, the Reds won game number one by a score of four to three game number two was four to two in the bottom half of the eighth Dodgers win game number three and game number four goes extra innings this 1974 Dodger team is an excellent excellent stratomatic team it is a really good team and um, I have yet to do a team analysis video on them I'm looking forward to doing it because this is a very very good stratomatic team But with that said, it's the 1976 Reds moving on to my National League Championship Series, which 
is set up. Best of five, 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates, the number two seed. And they'll be taking on the number one seed, 1976 Cincinnati Reds. And in game number one of my NL final, uh, I'm going to go with Jim Bibby on the mound for the 79 Pirates in game number one, rather than pitch Bruce Keyson on three days rest. And Don Gullett going for the 1976 Reds. Obviously, you know, the 76 Reds rotation is set coming into this series because they won their best of five in four games and used their top four starters in the series. So no issues with the Reds pitching coming into this series. And you're going to see the 76 Reds are able to take the first game in 11 innings by a score of three to two as Dave Concepcion walks it off with a ribby single scoring Johnny bench. Um, I give Jim Bibby credit. He, he pitched a solid five innings uh, for the pirates and the pirate bullpen did a really nice job of uh, keeping the game at two, two, but just couldn't pull through with any hits, um, any big hits for the um, 79 pirates. So, and once again, very solid outing by the Reds bullpen, Sarmiento and Eastwick who gets the win in the game. They throw four scoreless innings. So the 76 Reds take game number one. As we move on to game number two, I decide for the 79 pirates, I got to bring Bly Levin back on three days rest for game number two. And Pat Zachary goes for the 76 Reds and you're going to see the 76 Reds take this one by a score of uh, six to three as you have home runs by Joe Morgan, Johnny Bench in the bottom half of the third inning to give the Reds a four nothing lead Um, after Dave Parker solo home run in the top of the fifth 79 Pirates are able to cut it to four three Uh, but then In the bottom half of the fifth inning, you had a big error committed by Dave Parker when Joe Morgan was at the plate. So that put runners on second and third with two out. And Ken Griffey comes through with a two ribby single to make it 6-3. And that's how the score would hold Uh, once again. And I hate to repeat myself, but again, terrific outing by the Reds bullpen. Four scoreless innings between Bourbon, Sarmiento, and Eastwick. So the 76 Reds take a 2-0 series lead in this best of five. So obviously, as we go back to Pittsburgh, the 79 Pirates backs are to the wall. They go with John Candelaria and Gary Nolan is on the mound for the 1976 Reds. And you're going to see the 79 Pirates are able to hold off elimination as it's catcher Mel Ott hitting a walk-off two-run home run in the bottom half of the ninth inning to win it by a score of um, six to four. He hit that home run off of Bourbon, but the home run was hit off of uh, Mel Ott's card. Um, Ken Tocovi gets the win in relief, but the Reds were able to hit him a little bit. Um, You had a ribby single by Ken Griffey to make the score six, five in the top of the eighth. And then George Forster tied the game in the top of the ninth to make it four, four. Um, but nonetheless, 79 pirates are able to save off elimination. So we move on to game number four, where we have Bruce Keyson on the mound for the 79 pirates and Fred Norman on the mound for the 1976 reds. And you're going to see right here that the 1976 Reds are able to take it by a score of six to five. So they win my 1970s National League Stratomatic tournament. Um, You could see uh, Joe Morgan hits a two run home run in the first and then he hits a solo shot in the top half of the third. And then after Tony Perez two run Jack in the top of the six, it was five nothing Cincinnati. And then. Give the 79 Pirates credit as they started to claw their way back into the game. Um, a big hit in the bottom half of the sixth inning was a Tim Foley two ribby single. And then they were able to get a run in the bottom half of the eighth inning with a Dave Parker home run and trailing six to four as we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. You could see um, I was just bringing pinch hitters off the bench for the 79 pirates going up against Eastwick. Um, Eastler leads off by making out. I bring Milner off the bench. He gets a single Mel Ott who was hitting ninth. He was double switched into the game. Um, He makes an out. And then um, Omar Marino uh, gets a ribby single. That single was actually a uh, fielding chart 
hit. That was the ground ball back to the pitcher, but Eastwick is a five fielder. So um, that comes up as a ribby single um, and Phil Garner makes the last out. Um, and it's really too bad too, because I was kind of hoping Gardner would at least get on base because I would have liked to have seen Dave Parker up in that spot. I thought it would have been a pretty cool way to um, have that either finish the game or just see what would have happened if Parker had gotten another at bat there. So the 1976 Reds win my 1970s National League Stratomatic Tournament as they defeat the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates three games to one. Now, a quick recap on this tournament. Um, And I'll start where I always start in my videos when I make these um, uh, when I talk about my tournaments. Number one, am I surprised the 76 Reds won this tournament? Absolutely not. They are by far and away uh, the best strat team of the 1970s. And um, if anyone has seen my team analysis videos, uh, you'll know that to date, this is this team has the highest grade that I have ever given out um, for a strat team. Um, I will say this, however, I will say that the 1970s National League Diamond Gem set is a very, very impressive set. The teams in this set are excellent. And specifically, I want to hit on the 1979 Pirates, the 1971 Pirates, and the 1974 Dodgers. These teams are all really, really good. And I would definitely say that the 70s National League Diamond Gem set I just think the quality of teams is a lot better when you compare it to the American League set. And that's with knowing how good the 1970 Baltimore Orioles are, the 1972 Oakland A's. Um, I also really like the 1979 Orioles um, as well. But I just feel like the teams in the National League set from the 1970s, it's just a deeper group than what you had in the um, American League. It just so works out that the 1976 Reds are a very, very hard team to beat. Um, Everyone knows how good the offense is. And I've spoken before about how good they are defensively and how much I like their bullpen. And just to give you a little rundown on what the 76 Reds bullpen did in this National League tournament in the eight games that they played, uh, they beat the... um, 74 Dodgers in four games, then they turned around and beat the 79 Reds in four games. So in eight games, the 76 Reds bullpen pitched 29 in the third inning and allowed seven runs. So they were absolutely terrific throughout this National League tournament. Um, And obviously they will move on to play the 1979 Baltimore Orioles in my 1970s Stratomatic final. Um, actually, haven't even sat down to start playing that series yet. Uh, I have to go back and double check the uh, paperwork uh, from that series. But I do remember off the top of my head, the 79 Orioles are going to go into that series with really a pretty much beat up pitching staff because I remember in the finals against the 78 Yankees, they had to throw Flanagan and Palmer in games four and five on three days rest. So it's either start Dennis Martinez on three days rest in game number one, or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll start Scott McGregor, although he did pitch in relief in game five. So I got to figure that out. Like I said, I haven't sat down and uh, started playing that series yet, but Um, it's obviously looking like the 76 Reds are going to be really hard to beat as they go into uh, this final series against the 1979 Baltimore Orioles. So anyway, those are my results from the 1970s National League Stratomatic Tournament. Again, the 1976 Reds win it as they defeat the 74 Dodgers in four games in the semifinals. Then they beat the 79 Pirates in four games in the National League final. So once again, I thank you all for watching. It is great appreciated and I will talk to you all down the road.